Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School and I'm out here right outside my overhang here at the classroom area um, and I'm burning just a bunch of scrap lumber that I've created over the last several projects. And I'm going to go ahead and cook with that today and shoot a video and we're going to make a wilderness or a hobo stew, whatever you choose to call it, which basically means we're going to make a stew out of whatever we got left hanging around in the camp kitchen. Now, that's a pretty simple process, but what I want to do is I want to discuss a little bit about rationing food and making meals for larger groups of people. You know, the typical ideal number in a camp is about four people, so you need to be able to cook for four people because there's no reason having people cook for themselves at every meal if you can cook group meals and you can carry group implements to cook those meals. And this gallon and a half milking bucket made out of stainless steel and this stainless steel pie pan to fit over the top of it like this for a lid is a very good concept for cooking for larger groups like that. It gives you a large container that you can cook in, boil water in, things like that, and it gives you a lid that can be used for other purposes as well. That's just another piece of cookware, but you're repurposing it as a lid. And this concept is used by a lot of the people up in the north. I've seen a lot of the schools and bushcraft places up in Maine and places like that use a system like this, especially if they're canoe camping and things like that. And Horace Kephart speaks vaguely in his book about a system of a larger bucket with a fitted lid that everything else or all your other cookware can fit down inside of. Now I would assume from reading the text in his book he's probably talking more about a garbage type pail, but this milking pail works really, really well for that. It's fairly expensive to buy a large, heavy-duty gauge stainless steel milking pail, but it's a one-time investment for a group camp. So the important thing today is, how do we ration our food to make sure that we have enough in the pot for four people, yet not use too much so that we're wasting food or that we have leftovers, and get enough good, wholesome food in there to feed those four people well? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a wilderness or a hobo stew. Pretty simple process. You're using anything you have left over in the camp cupboard. We're going to use potatoes, greens, uh, dehydrated soup greens, and we're just going to use some raw stock uh, meat for this. We're not going to use wild game, although you could use any meat from wild game that you have left over. Whether it's neck meat from a deer, anything like that, cut up pieces of raccoon, coyote, it wouldn't really matter. Any scrap pieces of meat that you've got that aren't staked out you could use for this process. We're just going to use beef today because I don't have any game meat right at hand here. But the process will be exactly the same. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a gallon of water and get that heating up in our bucket. I've got that going right now. And then we're going to add whatever's going to take the longest to cook, which is probably going to be the meat and potatoes, to be honest with you. But we'll go ahead and add the potatoes first. And for a group of four people, depending on the size of potatoes, if you're using full size, like a russet or an Idaho potato, you would probably put one to one and a half potatoes per person in the group, depending on how hearty the group eats. But for red potatoes, which I use a lot because they're small, they're easy to carry, you can carry lots of them, especially if you're camping or cooking for yourself, I generally will use about three of those potatoes per person in the group. So if we're cooking for four people, we're going to want to quarter four potatoes and put them in the pot right off the bat. Okay, I want to show you a product here real quick, and this is not something that I sell. You can get this on Amazon. It's called a flexible cutting board. And the cool thing about these is, is that you can roll these things up to put them in the camp kitchen or whatever it is you're traveling with, you can roll this thing up pretty tight to put it in your kit if you're cooking for a lot of people. It gives you something that you can cut on that's going to be nice and fairly clean as long as you keep it that way. So we're going to go ahead and cut up a quarter. Like I said, three potatoes for each person, so that's 12 potatoes that we're going to quarter up. And I've just got an old hickory chef knife I'm using here and then we're going to add this to the pot and we're going to add two beef bouillon cubes. Alright so we get our potatoes in there 
and then we'll take two beef bouillon cubes here and we'll just open them my dudes up kind of break them up and throw them in there okay Which we've got that going pretty well I'm going to go ahead and add a full large wooden spoon or scoop whichever you've got handy to use but a, a good full one for each person in the party so we'll put four of those in okay so you can see we got plenty of heat coming out of this thing now we got water boiling over the top so now when you take this pie pan off here you're going to want to put gloves on to do it and once that thing's boiling up that good now we're going to add our meat now as far as our portions go I would say one handful of meat chunked per person in the party that gives you an easy measurement system get a good big handful and put one per person in the party in the stew pot and that just leaves me with about a half a handful so I'm gonna put one more in there for the pot call it good okay so all of these steps of adding ingredients and all of this stuff getting the fire set up takes place over the course of probably 20 minutes and that thing is ready to cook down now we haven't put any thickener in there other than the fact that we have the starch in the potatoes that will thicken the stew. So we'll put a little bit of biscuit mix and maybe a little bit of instant potatoes in there after it boils down to about half the volume we started out with. And then we'll add some Old Bay seasoning, of course. Now I'm using this same adjustable trammel that I've been using a lot on this tripod. And it's easy just to pick that thing up and lift it up to get it higher or lower to the flames. When it starts to boil over like it is right now, I lift it up a little bit. It's a simple process. It's made out of wood. I got a video on it. It's a real simple thing to make. A few simple notches you got to carve in it and it's done. This one's been out here on this tripod for ever since I shot the video. So probably at least four or five months. And it's still just as good as it was the day it was made. So they work out real, real good. They're real simple to make. It's something you can do on the fly and not have to carry a chain of any kind. Now you're going to want to get in here during this initial cook process every once in a while and just kind of stir things off the bottom just to make sure nothing's getting stuck while you're cooking this down. Cook time on something like this is probably going to be at least an hour and a half. The object of the game now really is to keep the fire pretty high around that pot and get everything boiled so that you know the meat's done, the vegetables are rehydrated, the potatoes are cooked, and then you're building up that coal bed in the process and you can lower that pot down to a bed of coals and just feed it smaller material to cook that stew and thicken things up over time instead of wasting a lot of fuel wood for an hour and a half. You burn that heavy fuel that you've got for the first half an hour, 40 minutes. Everything after that should be coal-based cooking. So about 40, 45 minutes in now, we have taken the lid off. Because now we want that steam to escape because we want a reduction 
in the liquid because now we're just going to stew which basically means we're going to cook it for a long time we've got our meat pretty well cooked now the potatoes are getting softer so now we're going to let this thing cook down and that will mean not adding a lot of fuel to our fire and generally lowering our pot down to coal level to keep this thing on a simmer right at a boil so that water and steam are still escaping and reducing but we're really not cooking things any further than they're already cooked that's already taken care of now now we're just going to try to thicken this stew up and cook it for a longer period to really get stuff soft and tasting awesome you know, I've kind of went over this in videos past but it's probably worth repeating you've got a couple ways with a system like this to be able to adjust your food over the fire. One thing you can do if you need to raise it up a little bit is you can lift your tripod and adjust those legs in or out depending on what you want for height over the fire. And then your micro adjustments come from this adjustable trammel system so that you can lower or raise that stuff off of the fire itself. And it's a very simple system of notches and loops that allow you to do that that can be carved very quickly in the woods and will last a long time in camp. But having this pot covered in the beginning accomplishes a couple things. A, it keeps ashes out of your food when your fire is high and you're building things up and getting things on the boil. B, it traps the heat inside this container more so that it heats up faster. Any covered pot is going to boil faster than an uncovered pot. So those are the reasons for covering the pot to begin with. And now that we have everything boiled and we want the steam to escape faster and the liquid to reduce quicker, we don't want to trap the steam. We want it to escape as fast as possible to reduce the amount of liquid we have in here so that we can make our stew. So that's what we're doing now. All right, so once we've let that thing cook down for, I don't know, it's probably been an hour, something like that from time we started we're going to now use some of this biscuit mix that we've got and we're just going to put a couple spoonfuls in there like this about three and I'm just using a carved wooden spoon here that I use for coffee and things like that and chocolate and if you get used to measuring with what you've got it doesn't have to be one tablespoon one teaspoon you know, it becomes, okay, if I use a scoop of this, if I use a ladle of that, that's going to give you what you need. Now I'm going to put an equal amount of potatoes in here. And what I'm doing is basically going by one scoop per person that I'm trying to feed. So if i got four people I'm feeding, I'm using four scoops. Because I usually use one for myself. And this will help to thicken things up. Now the last thing I'm going to add to this pot is I'm only going to use one full scoop of Old Bay, maybe a scoop and a quarter. And then I'm going to stir the pot things should start to thicken up pretty quick after that once we get this thing down to where we want it we can then cover our pot again and let it simmer over the coals okay guys so while our stew's cooking down I'm going to show you another quick and dirty trick what I've got here is I have the lid to my bush pot I have two stainless steel dog bowls. You've seen me use these things in lots and lots of videos, especially in the discount bushcraft kit. These are going to create a Dutch oven. This is going to be a platform to keep what we're cooking in the Dutch oven off the very bottom to keep it from burning. And it fits in there almost perfect, as you can see. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take a bag of Martha White Just Add Water cornbread mix. Gotta have something to sop up all that stew with, right? 
So we're going to make ourselves some cornbread here. And all we're going to do is the same thing that we've been doing with this. We're going to add water to the bag, just like this, and mix it right in the bag. Not dirtying up a ton of dishes by doing that. And you just want enough water in there to make this pretty thick when you get it all mixed up. Okay, so to prep this Dutch oven for cooking, we're going to take the Dutch oven itself and we're going to drop our lid upside down, creating air space between the bottom and the lid. Then we're going to get some of our cornbread mix here. And we're just going to shovel it right into the middle, just like this. Just give yourself a good pancake there. Now we're going to take this second bowl and put it over the top. And we're going to use just a couple of these paper clips, just like this, to keep it closed and head for the fire. So now, we're going to take our stew and we're going to move it off to the side just a little bit. It doesn't take much to have to do that. We can just move the tripod just to shade. And that's going to move it off to the side. And then, we're going to take these good hardwood coals we got here. Crush them up a little bit. Move some of them out of the way and off to the side. Drop this oven right in the bed, just like that. And move that big piece out of the way. Don't really want him in there. And then we'll take this stuff that we shoveled to the side, put it on the top, just like that. Now one of the things that I'll generally do is I'll come in here and turn this dude a half a turn, about 10 minutes in. Just like you would a Dutch oven. Alright, so the first plate of the stew is going to go to Rufus here. And we'll just use our lid for that. Man, man Rufus, you're getting over buddy. All right, so we got our Capulca bowl here. Get ourselves filled up. We'll check our cornbread. All right, so we got some stew over there cooling down. Rufus has got some cooling down. Now, get our cornbread out of here. Just wipe the ash off of that dude. Real good. We just need to take our clips off. Set them aside. There we go. There's our cornbread. Okay guys, I'm kind of fighting wind here a little bit. Um, I wanted to give you kind of an up close here at this stew pretty good here got a little bit burned on one side of the cornbread here other side looks like it came out real good there you go, look at that looks real nice time to eat all right well as usual Rufus has his completely done before I get the first bite, but <laughs> now I see why. Man, holy cow, that is awesome! A little cornbread, mm -hmm. 
Golly. Man, oh man, that would go down great on a cold winter night. For sure. Just the right amount of heat without Old Bay. Man roof, you can't beat that with a stick, buddy. Let me get you some more. Oh, well. Folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me here for this quick video today on how to make hobo or wilderness stew. A little bit of cornbread, a little tip or trick about how to make a Dutch oven and cooking in a bucket. I appreciate your views and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Back at it, Rufus.